Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. <laughs> Randy this is Santo. I like it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So it's uh, it's your first podcast. Uh, I mean here, yes. Oh, oh, so but first podcast, but you've done radio shows before. Uh, well, I've done a lot of radio shows, but I've done probably twenty or thirty podcasts, but they're from my computer. Oh, oh, yeah. you have your own podcast personally? No, 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 no. Like other people will ask me to be on their podcast, oh, and I'll okay. do it through either the phone or through Skype. Absolutely. Or something like that, and then they'll save the audio from it. Oh, I didn't understand yeah. that before. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I've, I've never been in like this this atmosphere for a podcast. Absolutely. All the podcast people I do are in Australia or Europe or in on the East Coast or something like so that. So it might be like an I hour phone it. call or something like Correct. that. Correct. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, I'll just sit there on my computer or on the, um, on the camera or something sometimes. But then, yeah, then I'm just done and... Um, I didn't have to go anywhere. This is my first Springfield podcast. There you so go. I'm excited. First yes. in person. First yes. in person. Agreed. Yes. And actually, it's a special and, occasion. And first, yeah. It's a special occasion because I realized, like, actually, like, actually realized probably 20 minutes before this started. But uh, you're my 100th guest on Jordan's subjective perspective. Oh, is that crazy? That's exciting. Yeah. And 100. it's the first time with all this new equipment. Exactly. So yeah. It's going to be a good one. I'm excited. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So I thought a good like opening question or like intro question would be how did you how did you get started? How did you become a professional eater? Okay. Well, first of all, for everybody listening, I appreciate it. My name is Randy Santel. I am a professional eater. I was born in the St. Louis, Missouri area. Family all lives in St. Peter's now, but in 2010 I started on my little journey that I'm on. My first degree was actually from Con Missouri State University. It was construction management. But then since 2010, I've been a professional leader, and I now have 716 food challenge wins in 31 countries and then 49 states. I just, my sister and I went to Hawaii for a week before Christmas, and I got state 49. And then my graduation present, I graduate again from Missouri State with a degree in nutrition and dietetics. I'll graduate in May, and then we'll go to Alaska, which will be state number 50. So back in 2010, I won wow. a national body transformation contest sponsored by Men's Health Magazine and then the television show Spartacus on the Stars Network. Do you ever watch that at all? I've seen like an episode or two. Yeah, it was about the ancient gladiator days, but those two organizations sponsored this body transformation contest about 12 weeks long. I was only able to participate in about 10 of it, but I ended up winning and got flown over to Auckland, New Zealand to be on the set of Spartacus. On the last day of the week, I was dressed out in a gladiator outfit, basically like a thong uh -huh. with a whole bunch of sponge tan on me. It was it was awesome. No way. But I didn't yeah, realize Yeah, I got this. to swing a sword in the background. <laughs> and then after that, I started getting real serious into these food challenges. Uh -huh. For anybody that doesn't know what a food challenge is, it's kind of like what's on the show Man vs. Food, where, say, a restaurant hosts a five-pound burger challenge. You have to eat it in a half hour, and if you win it, you get it free along with a T-shirt. I have 716 of those wins, so it's been wow. it's been fun. Wow, that's absolutely insane. Yeah, and no, and you said you've watched some of the videos, so I, I appreciate it. I've watched a few. Yeah. I've watched a few. They're entertaining, man. They're entertaining. Oh yeah, I edited about the first 100 myself, and then in 2013, my friend Magic Mitch Dombrowski he joined up with me after I had posted that I needed some help. He had a degree in multimedia from up in a university in Wisconsin, but he's been doing most of the video editing since then, and his abilities really upgraded the video. So we've been doing great. We were It took forever to get to 100,000 subscribers, but now we're at 640,000 on YouTube, and then we're over 600,000 followers on Facebook now, too. So it's really exciting. We've come a long way. That's awesome to have both platforms. Yes. Most people, especially in the eating world most people just have a big youtube following or they focus more on their youtube following some have a pretty good instagram and stuff but we're really one of the only monetized channels in my space on facebook so it gives oh, us really? yeah it gives us good diversity absolutely so even if i mean it's not going to happen but say google and youtube shut down we still have facebook holding us up so it's, it's good to have two totally different companies that where you have a big presence on different audiences as yes well. correct yeah because i like to say we have over a million subscribers 
but technically you can't because I don't know how many of the 600,000 on each are overlapped. Uh -huh. So my thoughts are that we probably have over a million subscribers between the two. I'd say so Individual, too. yeah. So, but Most likely. we'll just wait until we get to the to the one million to actually claim it. There you go, and you're you're expected to sometime this year as well. So yes, right now we're gaining like thirty to forty thousand people, or no, yes, a month on YouTube. So if it if things keep up the way they are, we might hit one million in September, October, at the latest early 2020. So it's going to be. I'm excited. It's going to be awesome. fun. Yeah, I've already got the shirt that I'm going to buy planned. Uh -huh. When you get to 100,000 subscribers, you get a uh, silver play button. But uh -huh. then once you get to a million, you get a gold play button. So I'm going to get this nice red shirt just with a sexy gold play button on it. It's, it's going to be fun. <laughs> I haven't go. decided if I'm going to put my channel name, Randy Santel, on it or not. But it'll be fun. You should. You should. Probably, because then people will be like, what the hell is that? But then they'll see the name there and be like, oh, I need to check that out. Right, right. But also, it's a little bit arrogant, but might as well. No, it's, no. It's you're advertising. Just, it's, it, it, yeah, it's not even like flaunting an accomplishment. It's just stating an accomplishment. That's how I see it from my perspective. I yeah, think, it's not like, yeah. hey, look at me. It's uh -huh. more just, yeah, wearing the name. Absolutely. So, so how many T-shirts do you have? Because I've noticed after watching your videos, a lot of the, the trend I've noticed is you get your, your picture on the wall of fame typically, and then you'll get a free T-shirt as well. Correct. Yeah, that's probably the most asked question because I always play up that I, I want a sweet T-shirt <laughs> by winning because a lot of people ask, why the hell do you do these? And I don't really go too far into it because a lot of it has to do with all the nutrition things that I'm working on now and becoming a dietitian for. But yeah, I've got three 55-gallon tubs uh -huh. completely packed full of sweet T-shirts at my mom and dad's house. And then I'm in the process of growing the fourth. So how big is it? You said a 55-gallon 55 55-gallon 55 tub? How, how big is that? Like, just rough estimate. Oh. So you, you see that tub right over there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I have – I'm filling up a – that's like a that's like less than half of one. Wait, let me I'm, – I'm pulling this up. I'm putting this on the – So, wait, so this this is half half of one – yeah, I've got three 55-gallon tubs full, and then I'm working on filling up one of these, which is almost so like— So you got about six of these, then? Uh, I would say eight. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. basically eight. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I don't know how big this is. Does it have a tag on it at all? Uh, nah. Yeah, probably not. This looks well used. But, yeah, no, probably—I'd say eight or nine of those, probably. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, no, there's a ton. So, and then the, the goal is, is that one day— I have no desire to own and uh, run a restaurant myself, but my always, uh, if anybody watches my videos, I do this thing where I turn my hat. I have like a pre-ritual right before I start my challenges. Yeah, absolutely. It, I've it's, seen it. it's based off the movie Over the Top with Sylvester Stallone. I've always Never been a big it. Sylvester Stallone fan. Uh -huh. Oh, it's an arm wrestling movie. It's it's definitely a manly meathead movie to watch. Uh -huh. My dad got me watching it, but I've always been a Sylvester Fitting. Stallone fan. And in one of the Rocky movies, uh, when Adrian died, he started a restaurant called Adrian's. And in the restaurant has all of his old newspaper articles and everything from his boxing career. Uh -huh. So one day when Randy Santel is more known and once all my stuff is up and going, I'll probably have one or two, three restaurants all of the decorations are going to be my shirts and stuff. A lot of people say I should make a massive quilt and things, but I want to do more with it all than that. A quilt is more just for me to keep myself. It'll be more of uh, allowing other people to enjoy the collection and all that by just having stuff in the restaurant. And even if those restaurants fail, I'll still be able to keep all the T-shirts and do something else with them. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Yeah, they kind of just tell the story of, of everything I've done so far as a professional leader. I like the quilts idea. I'd like it, but I like your idea a lot more. And I like the idea of like sharing your experience and your background. Yes. And, and those wins. The W's. The W's. Oh, yeah. Winning those with like everybody else. If you do decide to uh, start a, start some sort of business or restaurant or whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And there's t-shirts from like 32 countries or something like that. Yeah. Well, I'd say probably 28 to be modest. That's Because I've got wins in 31 countries. But there's like one or two countries where I have eating contest wins, but not food challenge wins. So um, I, have, I have a lot of T-shirts, that's for sure. 
So that's like the one thing that I always keep. I always keep my shirts and my hats. Whenever I win trophies, it doesn't happen that often because I don't do too many eating contests, but mm. those don't really have much value. It's the, the T-shirts that I like to keep. I like it. I like it. So That's really cool how like your ability to eat and just eat I mean, massive amounts of food has taken you all over the world. Oh, it's nuts. Yeah, if you really think about it, just <laughs> the things that you can do on this social media world uh-huh. that our parents weren't able to do. Like most of the things that all these kids and adolescents and even me at 32 year old and all of the adults and stuff, the things that you can do with social media is just crazy. It's insane. So, yeah, if I didn't have all this, I would still be working construction which was my first degree Uh here. I graduated in 2008 from Missouri State with construction management. But my last year of construction was 2013, and then since then I've been all focused on all this. Wow. Wow. That's really crazy. Yeah. Thank God for the Internet. That's for sure. Absolutely. I was was actually introduced to somebody. I forgot his name. I forgot his name, but he eats like anything. He Oh, what was his name? I I literally found this guy last night. My buddy showed me him. L.A. Beast, maybe? No, not L.A. Beast, but he calls out L.A. Beast. Matt Stoney? No, he's he's probably in his 40s. He he got on Tosh.0. Oh, he was homeless. Really bizarre oh, person. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. He'll eat anything. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, he has a big Vice special as well. Um, he <laughs> gets a lot of crap because he'll inbox subscribers and he'll ask them to pay him five bucks. Oh, really? Yeah, Shoe Nice is his name. Shoe Nice, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen anything much about him lately, but yeah, he used to eat all kinds of crazy stuff. Tampons, he'd drink a fifth of vodka and things, all for video views. That's crazy, nothing I would ever do. I saw but... both of those yesterday. Oh, yeah, yeah, I bet. Those those are two of his mostly known videos. Kind of unrelated, but I thought I'd... He, I just found out who he was like, literally oh, no, last yeah, night. Oh, no, yeah, I've had... I think he was subscribed to our channel for a while, but it was mostly probably trying to, with some kind of agenda, of taking views and getting me to follow for follow kinds of crap. But uh-huh. also, too, he had a really good Vice special on him. And then in 2015, we had a good Vice documentary on on me that was put together, and it actually helped really jumpstart our channel. So it was pretty exciting. I was over in England on a UK tour, it was, I think, my second European, no, my, my third time over there. But Vice basically contacted me wanting to do what I thought was like a 30-minute interview or something just for a, a news article or for their website or something. But 23 hours and two days later, we filmed this massive documentary with a team of five of us. It was really cool. It turned it, They put it on a couple months later, and that really, there's like a hook on it. It's like 18 minutes, and then this, this hook on the end that basically where I say, I'd rather be laying face down in a gutter or something than give up on my dreams. And everybody, wow. that got, that got a, real, a lot of subscribers to over to our channel. So that really gave us a boost. It was pretty neat. What what made you say that? Um. Oh, I mean, I, it was true. Uh-huh. So another thing people like, too, is I used to wear a ring that said married to my dreams that I had made on when I first started and everything because I was, it took like, I started in 2010, and I was serious 2013. It wasn't until, like, 2016 where we actually started making money. Oh, wow. Yeah, on on that first trip, or no, on that trip where the Vice special happened, I had to borrow, like, $4,000 from my mom and dad that they had stashed in a fund for my, uh, what's it, uh, what do the men have to pay for traditionally for a wedding? Uh, I'm not sure. The, The celebration the night before. The oh oh bachelor's party no no yeah. <laughs> no no no, no, no. <laughs> they set no, aside money the, uh, the dinner before the the rehearsal party yeah my I don't mom even know what that yeah, is. yeah yeah it's like the rehearsal party <laughs> the night before the wedding okay. mom and dad had some money saved for whenever I do get married and I knew that wasn't coming anytime soon uh-huh. so I was like mom can I borrow some money out of that since it's not going to get used they're like oh well we know it's not going to get used <laughs> so yeah 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 so I borrowed that and then. Luckily, things are, are much better now. Wow, that's so. crazy. That's yeah, crazy. no, it's it's a it's been a wild adventure. That's wait, for what sure. did the what did the money fund? It basically my trip over to the UK. Wow, so uh, that's a big risk. Oh, I, yeah, I respect yeah. that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I I, I basically got a one way trip over to the UK, not knowing when I would come back. Uh-huh. But I wasn't working or anything, and I just knew I had to film all these new videos. So that Mitch, we didn't have money for Mitch to come with me at the time, uh-huh. but I filmed like thirty, forty videos 
all in the span of like 50 days and then i flew on home did your parents think you were crazy um they they thought it was weird for many years but Uh they've always known that i have the personality that i'm gonna do it anyway Uh uh-huh so they knew that it was smarter to support me. And it turned out for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, but I've gotten some funny questions from my dad that I give him shit for now. But at one point, he asked me, son, how much money have you pissed away or wasted by doing all this food stuff? How much money would you have made in construction by now? But Do you uh, still ask you that? Oh, no, 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 no. No, this, was like, this okay. was like three or four years ago. Absolutely. Okay. But uh, I helped pay off some of their home loan. For their Christmas present this year. And I said, Dad, you still want to ask that question? Oh, I love it. I yeah, love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, are you a country music fan at all? A little bit. I'm kind of okay. somewhat familiar. My mom and I used to always play the Sugarland song, which was one of their big, big first hits. Wait. Please, Mom and Dad, please, please send, send money. money. I'm, I'm so broke that it ain't funny. funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that so, song. Great yeah, song. We've always Great played song. that. Yeah. Now, I'm not there yet, but one day I'm going to be able to help mom and dad more than i have and i'll play that song it'll be fun does that motivate you at all uh yes yeah 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 Yeah, just having the support that i've had is not something that most people get to i guess are are fortunate to have so it's been pretty neat like in 2013 i moved home well actually uh january 1st 2014 i started living at my family's house for what i thought was going to be three months and then it ended up being until summer of 2016 when I moved here to start school. And how long How long in total was that? Uh, oh, mom always lets me know. It was basically two years and seven months. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so I did Was a, that kind of hard for you? Like you, you had this plan of moving in for two, three months, and it ended up being like way longer than you expected? Or uh, No, because I knew that mom and dad wasn't uh i mean they weren't in a rush for me to leave mom Mm -hmm. and dad i mean they mom mom enjoyed it more so than dad of me being home but i was also able to help around the house and stuff but the money just wasn't there so i wasn't going to move away knowing that there wasn't money to knowing that i'd probably have to move back yeah absolutely like three months later so i just made sure all my ducks were in a row and then um in 2015 I was on a Eastern USA tour, and I had been working on a nutrition education system for a long time, actually since 2012, and I realized that it, if I wanted to really go at it 100%, I had to become a, a full-on dietitian. So then I decided that I was going to go back to Missouri State University and get my degree in dietetics so then I can move on and become an RD. So this is, right now we're in semester six of six, so I graduate in May, and then I have to do a 1,200-hour internship in order to become a dietitian. Uh-huh. You have to get a degree in dietetics from an accredited university, which is only like six or seven in Missouri. And the two options in the St. Louis area were SLU and Fontbonne, uh-huh. which are both very expensive. It was the same price for one year to go to school there and live at home than it would be for like one year. Uh, or no, for like all three years, pretty much, at Missouri State. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it was a pretty easy decision. And plus, Springfield's just a, a, a pretty good town. Yeah, yeah, so, it's grown on me. It's yes. grown on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but also, too, I came here for football in 2004. Uh-huh. Because I graduated, I was class of 04 high school. I was getting looked at, because I had a knee injury, that, and I was overweight. But... um. I was lo- I was looking at schools like Truman University mm-hmm. and like Division Two real small town schools. Right. So Missouri State was like the biggest school, biggest city school that was recruiting me. So it was an it was an easy decision to come here. But then yeah, it it grows on you for sure. Two easy decisions to come to most state. Yes. Yeah. 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 Respect. Yeah. Yeah. And I wasn't going to go to Mizzou or anything like that. I had to had to come back. And plus Absolutely. two of of wanting to be uh, in the public eye and image and stuff. I knew that it would help more to be from the same school, getting both rather than jumping around. Uh-huh. More concentrated focus of being able to say from Missouri State. Okay, so, okay, that does make sense. I yeah. figured that would help. Yeah, yeah. And when I graduate, it'll be seven years total, so I'll be able to say something about. You ever watch Tommy Boy? Uh, no. A lot of people go to school for seven years. Wait, that's the guy who. Died from a cocaine Chris overdose. Farley. Chris Farley. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and then David Spade in the movie says, yeah, they're called doctors. So it's like a, a funny one. Oh, uh, okay. Post. Yeah. 
So I'll be the first, what I think, I'll think I'll be the first dietitian with a construction management degree. Oh, there you go. Ever? I think so. Well, dietetics is 95% women. You did tell me that. That's wild. Yes. Yeah, it was, it was crazy because my first degree was construction management, which is like 95% men. Uh-huh. And then going back 10 <laughs> years later where I'm 10 years older than everybody uh-huh. to a, a degree that's all women. It was weird. So I went from all plaid and construction management to my first day of dietetics, all Starbucks cups. It was a big <laughs> transition, that's for sure. That's great. I like that. So Honestly, humble beginnings, man. Humble beginnings. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I still, I still try to say humble now because at the end of the day, I'm just eating. There's not really anything that special to it. It's more, I've never been the best eater. I've always just, of what I say, I've always worked the hardest. Um, it's, I've always been fully focused on this. All the other eaters, most of them are just kind of do it as a hobby. Okay. So okay. And if you treat it like a hobby, it will always stay a hobby. So, so, so I've how always did you been train fully your, focused on getting all this going. How do you train yourself to eat so much then? Well, I've always been able to eat a lot. Right. Um, it's, it's a pretty genetic thing as far as being able to eat. Most of the really? people that are really good at eating, they just have more of a genetic ability. You can train yourself to get better, but first, if you really are going to be good, uh-huh. it's more of a genetic thing to start. But I used to train a lot more than I do now. Now, especially now that I'm ending my my run and almost time to start focusing more on the nutrition side of things, I'm mostly on a diet, losing weight and things like that. So I don't train as much as I used to. But back in the day, and I've got all of my teachings and techniques and stuff on foodchallenges.com, which is the website I run. There's over 100 articles teaching how to strategize and train and even recover from food challenges. But I used to just pretty much buy a big watermelon and just see how much I could eat. Sometimes I'd eat like 10, 12 pounds of watermelon. Uh And you do that as a big max out meal like 20 hours before your food challenge or your eating contest. And then it's mostly water and it's lower in calories. So you just pee a lot, but pretty much once it's contest time or challenge time, you're just empty and ready to eat. So it expands your stomach. Correct. Yeah. Some people use liquids, but I've never really done that because it's dangerous. Uh Like some people will try to drink over a gallon of liquid at a time. If you're going to do that, you should do something with electrolytes like Gatorade or whatever else you want. But I've always, like in Kansas City, at one of the chain grocery stores, they used to have buffets on the salad bar. Uh So I would spend like eight bucks one day a week, and I would just go up there and just see how much salad I could eat, along with maybe the last plate would be like fruit salad or something like that. But yeah, I mean, if you want to eat more, you train yourself by eating more. So it seems like the way to train is like high volume. Yes. But like low caloric intake. Correct. Yeah, especially if you're like me where you're prone to gaining weight. Uh huh. If you're more of a hard gainer where you have a higher metabolism and you can stand it, I've done a couple times where you go to like CC's or Pizza Street or like a pizza buffet or if you have a Pizza Hut near you or even Golden Corral or something like that, uh-huh. just do a massive or a Chinese buffet. Those are always good. But just do a big training session, get your stomach as, as jam packed as you can. And then just you got to get rid of it all basically over the next 20 hours and then you'll be free, ready to eat. And even if you're not training for a contest, it's still just you pretty much treat the stomach just like you would your biceps or any of your skeletal muscles. Uh In order to grow them, you've got to work them and train them to relax more so that you can eat more. Okay. I'm just imagining these buffets, you walking in and the the people working there like – Randy's back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get him out of here. A lot of people have asked me if I've ever been kicked out of a buffet, but no, I haven't because I'm not really arrogant or anything uh-huh. like that. I have, I wear headphones just like I do during my most of my food challenges. And Why is that? Why do you I do that? I just kind of shut up and eat. Oh, it's the same reason as while you're working out. The music gets your mind off of the food just like it gets your mind off of the exercises that you're doing. Uh-huh. Or else it more is almost inspirational. Okay. Like, I listen to my favorite song in the world, and it'll never change, is Party in the USA by Miley Cyrus. <laughs> I've got it on my – I've had the same MP3 player since great. 2011, and Miley Cyrus is on there three times to make sure it's always playing. And then my favorite singer is Kesha. She doesn't put out enough music these days for my taste, uh-huh. but I understand the situation she's in. But uh, there's like four or five Kesha songs on there, and then Rihanna, Eminem. 
I'm a big Avril Lavigne fan. Okay. So I've got all this like ump up party kind of music that just kind of gets me in like a dancing rhythm and that transitions me or helps me influences me to to want to eat more i like, would not have guessed that. oh yeah no I would not have people guessed think that. i'm like listening to heavy metal or that's what i was shit. we were yeah, talking yeah, yeah, last yeah. night we were kind of speculating like I, I had a group of friends over and we were all watching your videos and they're like what do you think he's listening to and somebody's like probably heavy metal or like some hardcore rap yeah but what it, music i'm listening to Levine. yes yes <laughs> yeah my dream concert it would be avril lavigne no way yeah or, or like if ed sheeran taylor swift and Avril Lavigne all played a concert together. I would literally pay a thousand bucks for the ticket without even thinking. No twice. way, because those are all three of the people that I that I haven't seen yet that I really want to see. Okay, does yeah. this catch people off guard? Just like, oh, like yeah. being a bigger guy and really, yes. really yeah, yeah, yeah. like, yeah, like once they've heard that I've been to three Kesha concerts, they're like, okay, that's kind of weird. <laughs> but a lot of people think that the music I listen to is the music that's actually playing on the video, right? right. Which it's not at all. So we wouldn't be able to play the music I listened to because it would be copyrighted. Absolutely. And you wouldn't be able to monetize the video. So, but yeah, no, the, the, I get questioned about my music playlist and then the t-shirts probably most often. Okay, absolutely. And then people ask me if I puke, but um, that's an easy one because I don't. Do you ever get sick after or like just oh, feel yeah. like bad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I definitely won't say I've never puked. But, I mean, when you fill your stomach up with seven or eight pounds, mm -hmm. it's not something that it's just going to be happy about. Right, right. So sometimes I'll I'll be nearing the end, and I'll have, like, five or six bites, and I'll I'll just be thinking, oh, man, this is – there's a chance this might come up. But there's been times – there's been, like, four or five challenges where I have just been maxed out, just mind over matter. And within two minutes of turning the camera off, my body's just like – Randy, we're not keeping this. You got to do something, and then I'll just be like, "Oh, I got to wash my hands," or something uh, like that. And then, I mean, it's nothing where I just pull. Won't the tell anybody you're going to puke. I, I mean, no, it's not something that you want people to know about. Understandable. But there's also been times where I haven't made it to the bathroom. Oh, so wow. you just find a trash can or something. But wow. it's not like I'm sticking my finger down there. Right. It's right. just, I mean, if your body says something, you got to listen to it. Absolutely. Yeah. Kind of like so, when but, you gotta go, you gotta yeah, go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Most of the time, I, I keep it food. in, especially if it's under six pounds. Uh -huh. I can usually start drinking or something if I want afterwards, especially during a tour. Because uh -huh. like nowadays, back in the day, first of all, I used to go. I was working construction still, uh -huh. so I would do like two challenges on a weekend, maybe in a nearby city or or even in Kansas City where I was leaving or where where I was living. But now, especially that I'm in school. And I've done most of the food challenges around the Midwest. I have to go on these tours. Uh -huh. You can't just go to South Carolina and come back and then go back at another time. That'd be expensive. So I go on these massive tours for like months at a time. And there's no real training for the challenges during that because your training is pretty much the challenge you did the night before. So it's not about training. It's more about making sure you're empty. So and that's, all, that's all from my scheduling. I always make sure my challenges are or minimum like 16 hours apart. That's sometimes crazy that sometimes that's even... I'll do two a days, but That's crazy. Oh yeah. Two in a day? Yes. Yeah, that's what There's a lot of eaters that well, no, actually no um it's it's always fun to cuz a lot of people that when they start out with food challenges and competitive eating, foodchallenges.com is really the only site to go to for tips and stuff. Uh -huh. So most of the people that are starting their channels and stuff nowadays all of their tips and stuff they originally got off of foodchallenges.com, which is neat. But where I'm going with that is that it's a big deal for somebody who can do a food challenge. They might do one, two, one, two a week maybe every now and then, four or five a month. It's a real big deal to do like two in one weekend. Uh -huh. They're like, I don't know if I can do this. But then once you coax them into doing it, then they do it and they're like, oh, okay. And then it's just kind of a stepping stone. Once you do a couple – two in two days then you're like oh maybe randy does all these two a days i've done four in 22 hours which what? is just stupid what? I, I would never try it again uh -huh. but um i went that's crazy yeah numbers 9 10 11 and 12 were all done no throwing up all within 22 hours of each other all successful too yes yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. yeah the fourth was a spicy challenge do you know how many calories that was like, oh total? it was stupid 
Really? Yeah, like the first challenge, it was it was the one man, it was on featured on Man vs. Food Des Moines. It was about five pounds, and then I woke up for breakfast at a four pound burger, and then a couple hours later, I did a like a four and a half pound like fried food sandwich covered in melted cheese, and then I went over and did this barbecue beef sandwich that was probably about a pound just covered in ghost pepper sauce. Wow. So yeah, all within 22 hours. I would never try it again. But my craziest weekend is in Seattle. Many years ago, I did six challenges and one little one pound donut contest totaling like 33 pounds all in three days. It was crazy. 33 pounds in it three days. It was crazy. Yeah, and I was going out at night drinking with my friends that I was there to oh. see. Yeah, it was nuts. And not one throw up. That's that. It's crazy. Even when you had drinking would, on top would, of that. Yeah, I would never. I would never try it again. And like, it probably takes more to drink to actually like. Yes. Wow. Yes. That's crazy. Yeah, you can't. You don't get drunk off a of beer after a uh, after a seven pound food challenge. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy, especially at your size, too. Well, actually, I'm a bit of a lightweight for my size. You really? Look, Is that you, right? look, you look at me and you think, "Oh man, this this guy can probably drink a lot." But if you ask any of my college friends, they'll disagree with you. Really? <laughs> so you're, you're kind of a lightweight when it comes to alcohol. Kind but, of, yes. Really? Unle- unless I have a big meal in me. Okay. Okay. And also, it depends, and you know, it just depends on your attitude. Uh-huh. If you're like ready to go out and party and stuff, I'm a kind of a lightweight. Okay. Absolutely. But if I'm in the relaxed mode. I can usually chill for quite a while. Wow. It just kind of depends on, like, if I'm really celebrating, just watch out of my way. Uh-huh. I'm probably going to be falling asleep standing up somewhere. <laughs> but, <laughs> unless I have a big meal. Wow, yeah. I guess so. being a big eater, being a big guy, you would never expect that you're a lightweight whatsoever. That's hilarious Correct. to me. Yeah, That's yeah, hilarious yeah. to me. Yeah, well, th- the issue, too, is is that I, I drink sometimes like I eat. Okay, okay. So, like, by the time somebody's had their sixth beer, I've, like, had a 12-pack. Okay, absolutely. And then, so I, I, I die off quicker. People in college used to joke that uh, the pre-party is Randy's party. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was a rarity that I ever made midnight. But I'm a lot uh, more mature now. Yeah, I've noticed that's kind of a thing with drinking. Like, like whenever you're an underclassman, people just, like, black out earlier on in the night. Oh, yeah. But then, like, yeah, as you, you mature, like, that's something I've noticed in the past few years. When the beer bongs are around and all that, and when you're – especially I played football. Uh-huh. A whole bunch of us linemen all just like to drink and have fun and uh-huh. never fought or worried about girls or anything. It was always just having a fun time together drinking. And when – all those meatheads are all combined. Uh-huh. The lightweights die off pretty quick. Absolutely. Yeah, Everybody's yeah, yeah. cheering each other yes. on. Got yeah, all yeah, that yeah. testosterone. You, yeah, you get up in the moment. No, you, Somebody calls you a pussy. You can't, you can't just <laughs> let them say that. Hey, like, hey, what'd you say? No, give me that shotgun. I'll let me <laughs> shotgun chuck, that chuck, chuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so one of my big regrets, and it's uh-huh. not a true regret, but there's a restaurant uh, at the Lamplighter Inn. Okay. It used to be called right there in Sunshine and Glenstone. I think it's a Ziggy's now or something. But they used to have this 15-egg omelet. And this was back when in college all these people knew I could eat. They were trying to instigate me to go try this omelet challenge. Uh-huh. And I never did. I just pushed out. I just didn't do it. Right. But then once it came time where I was a, a food challenger, professional eater, the freaking place was closed down. Out of it was business. so sad. Uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had my chance and I blew it. Oh, no worries. Yeah. But you said a lot of these places that you've done food challenges at have uh, gone out of business as well, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the big things is I always kind of say that my record will never be broken as far as having 716 wins. And that's not just being arrogant. It's more of a of a knowledge, being knowledgeable about how everything works is that Man vs. Food started this food challenge craze back in 2008 to 2011 which is really, I started in 2010. I did my first one on March 19th, so you're early 2010. On the trend. Yes. So all the restaurants doing food challenges were open when I started. Uh-huh. Most of those restaurants are gone now. Like of my 716 wins, I would say that only about 300, if that, I, I don't really think it's 300. Less than half. I, yes. Wow. Yeah, maybe 300 of those are still available where you could go over and, and still do it. Wow. So for somebody to try to break that record, the people that are like second, third, and fourth are pretty much died down 
nowadays as far as they're not doing many challenges or competitions. So for like you to just start right now and say, hey, I'm going to beat Randy's record, uh-huh. almost impossible. Wow. You'd have to really work for it. Uh-huh. And also, since 2015, I've had completely different motives than competitive eating. So at some point, you would probably just stop because you'd finally realize, hey, there, what's the purpose of me doing this? Because at the end of the day, being a professional leader is a very tough lifestyle. Really? As far as just with the weight gain and, and trying to, to keep the weight off. Oh, I could bet, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like when I was doing one or two food challenges a week, that was easy. Because I would do the food challenges on the weekend. And then I'd have like five days to lose all the weight. Absolutely. And just eat lightly. But I'll do eight or nine challenges in a week on my tours. That's crazy. And like some some tours, I've gained like 50 or 60 pounds. In just the summer? Oh, yeah. Yeah, from like yeah May, May to August. I would, so that's like 20 pounds or, a month. Oh, yeah. Well, even during uh, while I've been in school, uh-huh. I always tell people, get a good look at me now after the spring semester right before the summer starts and then i'll, I'll come back like 50 pounds heavier to start Work the fall semester off. yeah and then over the course of the break i'll, I'll slowly lose the weight so that's insane to oh me. yeah yeah it's crazy most people wouldn't be able to deal with the weight gain and all that and the people that aren't doing that many food challenges they just i mean they're they're just it's a not a first place effort uh-huh. So they're getting dominated as far as in the food challenge realm by by me and and the people that are trying to keep up. There's people that are trying to keep up with videos, but as far as restaurant food challenges, there's nobody really close. So do you think restaurant food challenges as a whole was just kind of a trend as far as entertainment goes? I, I think that they're always going to be around, and I think at some point they're going to start back up, but I don't think it's going to be anytime soon just because – the world is so effed up as far as with nutritional knowledge. There's just, no, such, there's just such a problem with obesity and, and undereducation when it comes to nutrition that uh, man versus food already had its heyday. Now it's, people are starting to become more aware of the implications of just being overweight, which doesn't at all come from food challenges. But people are starting to get a little bit more health conscious. But also, too, I mean, it's all about supply and demand. Not as many people are doing the food challenges, so restaurants aren't selling them, so they just drop them. Uh-huh. It's, it's a waste of effort if they're not going to actually make any money off of it. So restaurant challenges are dying down, and there's no real buzz around them, so there's no new restaurants creating them either. Okay. So, yeah. So I don't know. We'll have to see. The other issue, too, is competitive eaters are, are killing the market themselves. How so? so uh, well, a lot of people like watching our channel because I respect the food. I always eat clean. I finished every last bite. Mm-hmm. I'm very family friendly. There's no cursing in the videos or anything. But a lot of the channels, uh, the people that are really quick, you just can't watch them. They're gross as hell to watch. Oh, I bet. They'll, they'll, they'll finish the challenge with food all over their hands. They, they cut the time early, still with debris sitting around. And it's just they're not fun to watch. So you're you're kind of conscious of like the entertainment, yes. the appeal. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay with losing three or four minutes off my time uh-huh. in order to provide a better experience for the people watching. Wow, that's yes. a way to think of it. That's a really cool way to think of it. Yeah, like even the only time that I truly care about time is when it's a record challenge in order to get the incentive I have to beat the record and it's a very quick thing. I saw you it, it was a uh, massive burger. I, I forgot and then a milkshake at the end. And you yes. did it in like 10 minutes? I where I won 1500 bucks? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was down in Mississippi and I really needed the money. Uh-huh. I was just about to fly over to Amsterdam uh-huh. for uh for an eating contest, an event where I was going to go to Belgium and stuff, and I had, like, no money, so I went, traveled hours down to, to do this food challenge, and, yeah, it was like a, a winner, or I uh, had to win. Uh, and you so finished was, with, like, 10 seconds yes. to go or something yeah, like that, Yeah, everybody right? thought I was going to lose, but then I just slammed down the milkshake. That milkshake was crazy fast. And then I just went fast. into, like, gorilla mode. Like, <laughs> yes! Raised my hands up high. I was like, oh, I did it. Oh, it felt so good. Yeah, I got... 
fifteen hundred bucks for that, and it was really needed. So. I, I thought the same thing, man. Like, cause you finished the burger, it was like what, like thirty seconds or yeah, something. Yeah, I had like fifteen minutes and twenty five seconds to do it. Uh huh. And I didn't finish the burger until I put the last bit of burger in my mouth at like fifteen minutes. So there was less than thirty seconds to swallow the burger and finish the milkshake. Oh. And then I just slammed the milkshake down. I was like, oh, he, he uh, didn't it was get awesome. it. I was like, yeah. uh, I was rooting for yes. you. Then I was like, no, then you just come up from behind. And boom. Yeah. So the incentive to win was literally a plane trip to Belgium? No, 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 no. Th- that was all paid for by the contest that I was going over there for. You but needed I had, money to I had get around. no money to spend over uh, there. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I needed the money to get over there. Wow. Well, not not awesome. to get over there, but to spend while I'm over there. See, I'm kind of replaying that video in my head right now, and it's like, like now knowing there's so much on the line or something on the line, it's, it makes it that much better. Oh yeah, yeah. The videos where there's like a real story to them uh-huh. do a lot better than the ones where, say, it's a five pound burger that's nothing special and everybody knows I'm gonna win. Absolutely. Those don't get as many views, but the ones with like a real story to them, they're just overall better videos. Those are those are fun to watch. Those uh-huh. get more views. So we've got like 20 videos over a million views now. It's pretty neat. Okay, absolutely. Absolutely. I just I just thought of this on the top of my head. This is kind of a weird request. Okay. But would you dedicate a food challenge to me? Possibly. <laughs> I get we get shout outs all the time, but actually if you want to do one with me, you can. Really? Yeah, there's like five food challenges that I have to do before May when I graduate uh-huh. that I've just been saving them. I haven't done anything with them. Like here there, locally? Yeah, there's one in Republic. Uh, there's one downtown Springfield, and then there's one in Joplin. I think I need to do, and then a couple around. But yeah, like you could come do the Republic one with me, dude. Hell yeah, I'll I'll, yeah, I'll try fun. it. I'll try it. I yeah. can eat a fair amount, but uh, well, and it's not the biggest challenge in the world either. So it's doable for for not first timers, but in I mean, you would be a first timer. Uh huh. But for more for more amateur level people, dude, I would love to. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, let's absolutely. Do it. That'd be fun. Then That'd you can be do really the video cool. and. Well, dedicated to you. That'll be me. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So, well, good. Yeah, I just thought and the back of my head. Then you can train using like, <laughs> dot com. There you go. Well, so foodchallenges.com, just to be clear, is your website as well? Yes. My first website ever was randysantel.com. And then a uh, family friend had given me the idea that, Randy, you need to think bigger with this. And he was able to help me procure the domain foodchallenges.com. It was unused at the time. So randysantel.com, I spent a lot of time on it. It had a whole bunch of health and fitness tips based off of what I had been doing to win that body transformation contest. And then I did another transformation in 2010 or 2012 kind of on my own where I lost 51 pounds in 10 weeks. So I detailed all that along with some other advice and things on that randysantel.com. And then I had like seven or eight different pages all about food challenge strategy because so many people were asking me i had like 100 wins by then and my social media following was growing a little bit um for that day and age uh for starting from scratch but people were asking about food challenge tips so i tried to throw in everything i could on there but then in 2014 or 2013 it was time to grow everything that i did in 2012 on randysantel.com into Thinking bigger food challenges.com. And then what those seven pages on randysantel.com became over a hundred different pages about all kinds of things, food challenges related on food challenges.com. Mm-hmm. And then food challenges.com has a whole global database of all food challenges around the world. And then there's even like 60 pages for restaurants wanting to find out how to actually start and market a food challenge. So oh. it's everything food challenges related. So do you get a lot of con- like uh, restaurants contacting you? Do they pay to be on your site or anything? Or? No, there's not that many restaurants that actually use it. And that's why that's one of the problems is a lot of these – Man vs. Food got this whole craze started with restaurants creating food challenges, but all these restaurants didn't put that much thought into the food challenges. As far as the marketing side of it. Yeah, they would either have it priced too high, the time limit would be too low, it just wasn't good food, nobody wanted to buy it. So there were all these challenges with issues that nobody was trying. Mm. They would get like 13 or 14 people to try them early on, but then it would just kind of die off, and then people would just think that, oh, just food challenges aren't big these days, when in reality, hey, buddy, your food challenge sucked. Uh So you could have put more thought into it, 
So, I mean, if, if the restaurant owner wouldn't want to try it himself, why would he expect customers to? Absolutely. So that's one of the big problems that, that was the competitive eating world faced mm -hmm. is that some of these restaurant challenges just weren't any good. Because you don't market them for people like me as far as the people that can eat them, can eat a lot pretty quickly, or any of the people better than me. I feel like what you would want to market to is the people that think they can eat a lot. Yes, yes. You've got to give the challenge hope. Uh huh. So you want you, the the most attempted food challenges are the ones that three or four guys can go into a bar with all together after a few beers and have one of them instigate the other after seeing it on the menu. Hey, you can't eat that. And they're like, Yeah, I can. And then just kind of get an off the keel order. Uh huh. So you got to be able to have anything over six pounds. Not that many people are going to be able to attempt it. Okay. So it's the smaller food challenges that, that get more attempts, especially if they're priced right. Absolutely, absolutely. So, and do they do they upcharge them? Because I noticed the one at Bears with like the what was it like ten patties, ten slices of cheese. I don't know how they got it now, but yeah, it's like four pounds of meat total. I don't uh -huh. know if they do multiple patties. I, I thought they were like four one pound patties. Okay, but then like twelve slices of cheese, twelve slices of bacon. Top and bottom bun, and then about a pound of fries. So it's they there. they want to upcharge them a little bit just to like uh, then if the people don't make it, then they they it, they kind of paid for the experience. Then uh, correct, yeah, not so much. You don't really want to do that on the big items just uh -huh. because that's going to just put the the price of the challenge way out of range for most people. Uh -huh. But like the three and a half pound burger challenges and things like that, where people have a higher chance of winning. Not only are they not always free. But, yeah, they're a little bit higher priced because that throws in money to cover the price of the shirts that they're giving out as part of the prize. Okay. So no restaurant doesn't. There's some restaurants that have a food challenge where their goal is to just keep their – they don't want to lose money on it. But then there's some, especially the ones in big cities or tourist towns. Uh -huh. Like if you go to a big beach city in Florida or something like that or California – there might be a place with a burger challenge was like three pounds. A lot of people can win, but not only will you still have to pay for it, mm -hmm. you'll get a T-shirt, but the price of that burger usually includes money for the T-shirt as well. So that's more of a money-making thing. Okay. So It's interesting to think about the business practices. Yeah, there's a whole lot well. of marketing aspects to food challenges. Do you mention any of this on your website as well? Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of articles catered to the restaurant people that – that want to find out more. Yeah, that's a great resource for them. Definitely, yes. Yeah, it doesn't get used a whole lot, but it's there for those that want it. And mm -hmm. if people don't put much time into it, I don't really give a damn if the restaurant fails. So, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you put the information out there, you can't feel yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, there's a lot of times where I'll go do a food challenge. Uh -huh. And by the time the video posts, just because we film a lot of our videos in batches, like, we'll film, like, 75 videos during a summer, all in the course of three months, and we post two videos a week. So, 75 videos is, like, 36 weeks of content or wow. whatever it is. Long, so, we'll be posting videos long after that tour. So, sometimes, by the time I, I do the challenge to by the time the video uploads, the restaurant shut down. Wow. And usually, I can usually call it. I'll, I'll finish the challenge, and then I'll walk out after saying thanks to everybody, just based on how many people were at the restaurant, depending on the time of day, how friendly the staff was, uh -huh. how nice the owner was. I'll be like, oh, this restaurant's probably going to be closed by the time the video uploads. Wow. So, a lot Get of people- your crystal ball out. Yeah, it's yeah, closing. Yeah. yeah. Well, once, you, <laughs> once you've been to enough restaurants, you kind of know the ins and outs of what it takes to have a successful one. So that'll that'll be huge if you do decide to pursue that route later on in life and, yes. and open your own restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be able to walk into it and kind of know if it's got a good feel to it. But also through that, I've known that nobody owns a restaurant. Uh -huh. If you do it right, the restaurant owns you. Mm, so what like, do you mean by that? Well, like I've got uh, I've got a, a good friend that owns a restaurant in Doolittle, Missouri, near Rolla. Uh -huh. He always jokes that he never gets a vacation. Or I ask him if he's been on any fun trips. He's like, man, this restaurant owns me or something like that. As far as the workload, well, yeah, they're they're all unless you have mm. such a uh, maybe you have multiple restaurants to the point where you have people managing them, uh -huh. or if you get enough people in where you've got a manager to take care of it. But I mean, if you own just a mom and pop restaurant, 
you're there so often that you're not able to take vacations. Oh. So almost in a sense, it owns you to the point where you're not able to just have the freedom to go wherever you want. Okay, absolutely. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It'd be kind of cool, too, if you do open up a restaurant like to where you uh you kind of have like video playing at the front. Like, I mean, you have tons of content. You could just put your videos on replay oh, yeah. or like a playlist. Yes. Because then and then it, it really uh, tells the story of of your um, of your background and why you opened up a restaurant, which is really that's really not relatable, but like humanizing to the. I don't know. I feel like that story would sell a lot and make add a ton of popularity. Well, and it would add and it would help out the people that have no idea who I am. Absolutely. Like you would know who I am and then you might take your friends out who don't know who I am mm-hmm. and they'll be like, who the hell is this Randy Santel guy? And then you're like, oh, watch watch some of the videos while we're waiting on our food. Abs- and they'll and that be like, would make oh, the- this is pretty cool. Yeah, it would, it would increase the experience. Abs- and the wait time would probably be extended in comparison to like a normal restaurant. Like, like, so I don't know me, for example, if I have a 45 minute wait, I'll be like, okay, guys, let's like, I'll turn to my friends. All right, let's go somewhere else. 45 yeah. minutes. That's ridiculous. But 45 minutes for you might be extended where it's like an hour and 15 for, uh, that'd be like my like weight, weight capacity. Does that yeah. make sense? Cause I, I'll, I'll look at the screen. I'll be like, kind of get enticed with that. Like, wow, this is crazy. Look at this guy. He's. He's going for it. He's going to finish that. He's oh, going yeah. to finish that. Well, it's just like when you're downtown Springfield and there's a line in the boogie. Uh-huh. I mean, some people are going to wait. Other people will go to Finn's. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, but, but it's like entertainment in the wait. Yes. So that's cool. Yeah, and then people would, I mean, there's people that have been following me since people point out, oh, I've been with you, man, since before 100,000 subscribers. Wow. Which is a long time. Mm-hmm. So once everything's still going, they'll they'll still be following, hopefully, and then they'll like oh man i've been it's cool to, it's just part of the experience for them as far as they've been following along those people want to see me succeed and everything i'm doing to keep growing so they'll it'll be fun for them to be a part of it absolutely or like some of the the families with their kids mm-hmm. it'll be more of a bonding opportunity of of go back to restaurants or we used to watch this guy when you were five years old, uh-huh. and now, now we're eating dinner at his restaurant. It'll be it'll be it'll be a cool experience for a lot of people. Wow, that might be like a tourist attraction. That restaurant in yeah. itself, I've never. This is crazy. This yeah, is or really somebody smart. say you went to my Bears challenge, then you watched me win the sweet T-shirt. Twenty years from now, when you're at the restaurant, you're like, I watched him win that T-shirt. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow, this so, is a cool concept. Be, yeah, it is. It See, is. clearly you've already thought on it. I'm just yes. like, this is all so new to me that I'm like, wow, this is awesome. Well, some people will tell me that I should donate all of the shirts to the, the charity and the homeless and stuff. And while that's a good thought process, these invaluable priceless shirts are never going to be on a shelf with a quarter stamp on them. Absolutely. There's just no chance for no reason ever. I would burn them before I sold them for a dollar. It's about the meaning behind yes. the shirt. That's yeah, yeah, what yeah. it's yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean how many shirts are sitting there at Goodwill now that nobody wants? And my the my t shirts are gonna be nobody's gonna know it's from New Zealand. Uh huh. It's just gonna have a fifty cent stamp on it with no value. It's only got value to me. And the the cool part is every single store or every single shirt, shirt is a story. story. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Because like like say you're uh, I don't know you're you're at the restaurant one night and you just feel like talking to somebody, socializing, and I mean you'll be, you'll create a community around yeah. that restaurant, which is so that's such a beautiful thought. But like you you just walk up to somebody like hey see that shirt right there, I remember that food challenge. And yeah. then you can like go into depth like uh, that's cool. Yeah, and you can almost have maybe. On each, you can have rooms segregated into to Europe, Asia, Ooh. or something like that, where the TV recycles all of the videos from where all those shirts are from in that room. Uh-huh. So there's there's a lot that can be done with it. Absolutely. So like one time you might go there and you want to sit in the Europe room, and then another you go to the Asia room and you have those videos on, and it's there's a lot can be done with it. Wow, oh, I see so, the vision. And then there's people that think way bigger than me that will have cooler ideas than I have. Yeah, good point. Good so, point. I mean, we would – I mean, right now they're all – I mean, once it comes time to get these shirts, I mean, what we'll, they'll have to, I don't know if we're going to frame them all, but you've got to figure out a way for them not to get stolen. If anybody steals a shirt, I've got to hit them in the back of the head with a bottle, and I don't want to have to do that. That's To me, that's justifiable. Oh, and no, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't feel – 
the the I'd be in trial and the the judge would say, uh, "Did you do this?" I'd say, "You're damn right, sir. <laughs> he deserved every inch of that bottle." And like, I don't. And I regret would do it, it again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Why would I pay a bouncer to do it when I could do it myself? There you go. You get the satisfaction. <laughs> and then the judge it. would say, "You know what? I respect that." <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, I, I see the vision. I see the vision, and I uh, I wish you the best. I, well, thank you. I appreciate it's it. It's cool to have like a an, an idea, like a concept to. Uh, when you come in, you can have a free appetizer. <laughs> hey, 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 I'll take you on that. I'll take okay. you on that. <laughs> so, I like it. Well, good. So I I at some point in time, I don't know when, I don't know when, but this is like a must. This is something I really want to do. It's it's almost at the point. It's not even like I want to do it. It's like I have to do it if I. Assuming I live to 30 years old, I want to backpack Europe. Okay. Where would you recommend? Like any tourist spots, not just to me, but like anybody, like some of the cooler places you've been. Ooh, let's see. I love Ireland, but my family's Irish. My mom's a Murphy. So um, the just the scenery around Ireland is really cool. But there's not really, I don't really have. See, the, th- the what's different about me is that. I've never really been just a tourist uh-huh. as far as just there. Like, I'll go to Croatia or something, and there will be people there waiting for me at the restaurant to come watch. Really? Yeah, and then they'll, they'll like, people will offer to show us around and things like that. So every now and then, it's just we go, and we're just, like, tourists. But um, everything is just centered around going to these, these places just for the food challenges. But... Let's see. There's not really anything. It was a big learning experience between like my first, second, third. Now I can go over there and it's a lot more fun because I know how everything works. Um, Like, are you aware how to work public transportation? No. Okay. Yeah, that was a big thing for me. Like, I would say before you go over to Europe, maybe go to Chicago or New York City Mm -hmm. just to not only get the feel for a big city, but also try to learn the the underground, the, 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 the L in Chicago uh-huh. or the subway in New York just to kind of get all that figured out. Because when you're in a lot of those bigger cities uh-huh. over in Europe, you're going to need to know. Um, and, it's, and it's really simple once you get to that point. But one of the cool things about Europe is, is everywhere you go, it's just kind of a different, different people, different foods. The architecture sometimes can be the same. Uh-huh. And if you've if you've seen one cathedral, you've seen a lot of them. Okay, is what I learned pretty quickly. Like whether it's in Austria or England or something like that, a lot of the the architecture for the cathedrals and stuff are pretty similar. But the big thing is is just learning all the different ways of getting around. Okay, absolutely. Because uh, especially in the UK, they drive on the wrong side of the road. The, I like how you they, the wrong they side. They think that we're on the wrong <laughs> side. But mainland Europe uh-huh. is, they all drive on, on our same side of the road. Oh, really? But uh, most of the cars over there are stick shift. Oh, I did not realize that. Yeah, and I don't, I don't have any desire to even learn how to drive a stick shift. I don't know if I do. You could probably drive an automatic. I just have never. When I go overseas and I'm backpacking and stuff, it's always just buses, trains. Okay, absolutely. Planes when necessary and things like that. Mm. But Europe is a lot more catered to doing that than the United States is. Why do you think that is? More compact or just? Uh... It's a little bit more compact, but also, too, more people in Europe and stuff travel. I have heard that. Yeah. I have heard that. Yeah, like the the amount of Americans with passports that actually use them is very very low. Why is that? I don't know. There's uh, and one thing that a lot of people think uh, as a hypothesis would just be that there's so much to do in America that there's not really a reason to leave. Uh huh. You might go once or twice, but in in Europe, most people in order to do something fun, a lot of the times they they have to leave to go to another country. Oh, so they get really comfortable with the yeah. crossing borders. Or and... it's just more of a, a family thing. Like, it's it's a well-known thing that most Australians will do, like, a gap year where they'll just save a whole bunch of money over the course of their high school and things like that. Uh-huh. And before they actually go to university, they just go on one massive trip. Uh-huh. They'll do it maybe with, like, a significant other or, like, two or three groups of friends. Or else some of them – I know a lot of people uh, from England – in the United Kingdom, it's really easy to travel between countries in the Commonwealth, like going from England to Canada or 
England to Australia uh-huh. just because they're all part of the whole – they're all based out of uh, – England ancestors from the England. Yeah, I never realized Canada was. Really? Yes. Okay. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Their figurehead, just like Australia, is the Queen of England. Oh wow! I yeah. did not know that. Yeah. So it's it's easy for them all to travel within those those places. Totally. Yeah. So you'll see a lot of Australians in England and things like that. But um, but yeah, I would say for you wanting to backpack, would do your homework uh-huh. because I lost a lot of money just through stuff that uh, I would have known if I had actually done some more research. Like more preparation. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like when I, I used Commerce Bank when I first went over there in 2012 on my very first trip. Uh-huh. And just in two weeks, I spent like 60 bucks on international fees. Oh, really? Yes. So what, you would recommend putting my money in like a, a different bank? Well, or, or else just have a credit card. Uh-huh. Um, I don't suggest taking a whole bunch of cash over there. Okay. Because um, you're going to encounter fees getting it changed over. What I use is Charles Schwab Bank. Okay. You have to have an investment. Um, I rolled over my initial IRA from when I was in construction. Uh-huh. And now I can have a banking account. And there's no international fees. So I'm able to just go to a, an ATM anywhere in the world. And there's no fees. And the, just I get money based on whatever the exchange rate is. That's what Charles Schwab? Charles Schwab. Yeah, there's a okay. few others now. I think maybe Bank of America or U.S. Bank or something like that may do it now. I'm not sure. I never thought about that, international Yeah, fees. yeah. If you go with a smaller bank, they're usually going to have international fees, which is like usually a 1% charge or something like that. But that adds up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Especially if you're going to do like a three- or four-month trip. Uh-huh. I mean, you might put a a a rental car or something on there for 300 bucks, uh-huh. but 1% of that, you're just an extra 30 bucks. Yeah. just goes right to a bank. Mm-hmm. So the other Completely thing is, is to, yeah, make make sure you have a credit card. Uh, I use Capital One, but I mean, there's a whole bunch as far as that don't have international fees now. Uh-huh. I know Chase, American Express, all those don't have one. But I would just, yeah, I would just do some research. And there's a whole lot of YouTube channels dedicated to travel tips. And oh things. no way! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh okay, interesting. Yeah, there's a whole lot of people that are that ju- this their YouTube channel is them traveling somewhere and then just giving a top five things to do in Belgium. Or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, See, yeah. See, I would like that appeal a lot more than like a blogger, like telling, like instead of reading about it, like actually seeing yes. it. It's like, it's like whenever you see something, you're like, wow, I yeah. need to see that. Yeah, nowadays, I just, if we're in a new city, I just look up tra- TripAdvisor, top 10 things to do in this city. Okay, absolutely. And I mean, the, pretty much the stuff to do is going to come up. Absolutely. It just isn't missing anything out of the blue. Uh-huh. So, so you've uh, gotten better at traveling. Maybe. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I, maybe even five hundred percent. When I first went over to Auckland, New Zealand, luckily I went over with my buddy. It was for that um, that that body transformation prize uh-huh. to be on Spartacus. I had no idea what I was doing, and that's kind of what opened my eyes to everything. Is it's just you get so comfortable with life here in the United States. Uh-huh. It's, it's easy compared to just anywhere else in the world. I mean, there's a reason why everybody dreams about going to the United States. Mm. Uh, just because there's so much to do, there's so much opportunity here. And it's just, uh, once you get over there, it's just you realize how different everywhere in the world is. Like, the the craziest place I've ever been is India. Mumbai, India really? is absolutely nuts. I don't even know how to describe it to people. You'll find trash places. Um, it's just, there's like no rules. The, the the streets it's what's crazy is there's just so many people there there's there's not even any lines in the road everybody just drives well, out of the blue somebody will do a u-turn and aren't it, bikes really common there so you can like cut through scooters scooters okay. yeah i would never ride a bike over there uh-huh. it's all motorized scooters and stuff if you want to have a bike amsterdam is the place one of the coolest things I've done is uh, over in Europe was I, I rented a bike uh-huh. over in Amsterdam. It was really neat. Wow. Just because you really can't get lost in Amsterdam. Uh-huh. And um, every, everything's just a circle. So you just keep riding around. Like, you know how Springfield is a grid? Absolutely. Of vertical and horizontal streets? Uh-huh. Amsterdam's a circle. Wow. So you just kind of keep on doing circles until you figure out where you're at absolutely yeah. that'd be easy to navigate and especially nowadays like i have t-mobile uh-huh. i don't i don't think every network is like this 
But T-Mobile works everywhere in the world for the most part, every developed country. Uh-huh. And there's not like any extra fees or roaming fees. Like it'll only be 2G, but I still have internet pretty much every country I go to. Okay. Uh, and it's not even anything that's extra. So I'm always – my first like two or three trips, I had to go somewhere with Wi-Fi in order to use the internet. Uh-huh. But now just with how all the plans are and stuff – I have I have internet all the time now. Really? So they've gotten more like international oh, yeah. internationally accessible. Yeah, kind of. yeah. T Mobile's a lot better about it's it. Huge. It's it's way easier to do our tours now. We don't have to take an hour each day broken up to, to go to a coffee shop uh-huh. just to use their Wi Fi or whatever to figure out what to do. Mm. I can just do it from my phone while I'm on a train or a bus somewhere. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Traveling's a lot of fun and um, just prices too. Europe's a lot more expensive to backpack than Asia is, but also at the end of the day, backpacking and traveling is as expensive as you want it to be. It's a good point. It's like point. you don't you don't have to do a twenty dollar dinner every day. You don't have to get drunk. Like hey, no. I know alcohol is going to no. be a huge expense if you're Correct. drinking a lot. Correct. Yeah, but also too, you don't have to drink it all at the bars. Yeah. yeah. You can get it cheaper somewhere else, and you don't always have to drink top shelf stuff. Good point. So. And you also don't have to spend, like, people, there's some people that thought that we were staying at, like, these $100 a night hotels, uh-huh. which is absolutely nuts. I might spend $100 maybe once every two weeks, but it's because I'm in this city where I didn't book ahead of time. Okay. Yeah. And it's just there's only so many places. Do you ever do hostels? All the time. Really? Yeah, really? whenever we can. Do you meet a lot of people through the hostels? You know what? I always heard that you do. But we, I never really did. Interesting. Okay. Um, you meet, you see a lot of different people. There's a lot of variety. Totally. But also, too, I was always there with for food challenges. Uh huh. The people that stay at hostels that like really meet people and stuff, they're the ones that go there for a week. They okay. They, they go buy food at the grocery store and they cook their meals at the kitchen in the hostel and uh-huh. stuff like that. I'm just kind of there for the food challenges and stuff. Absolutely. I'll meet people in the rooms, but a lot of times in hostels in Europe and um, even in – I've stayed at hostels in Miami, Philadelphia, and a couple other places in the United States. Not Chicago, so I've never had to. I've always had a place to stay. But um, a lot of those people don't know English. So you there's just such uh, variety of people. Absolutely. That you don't always – it just kind of depends on your situation. Uh-huh. Like when we first went over there, there are always people, not only do they say, oh, people, the women over in other countries, they just love Americans. Oh, really? That's a bunch of crap. Oh, uh, that's not true. No, it's a bunch of crap. Okay. So, I mean, maybe, maybe. I thought you were stating that they oh, did, no, no, and then no, no, I was no. like, oh, no. nice, hell yeah. Yeah when, <laughs> yeah, when we first went over there, people that had never really been over there, they'd been over there once, or uh-huh. they were over with their girlfriend. Oh, no, they love American accents, and they love Americans, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, they may love Americans, but it's not just fishing with dynamite Absolutely. like everybody would talk about. But in most places, people are well-receptive, um, especially of us. Like, I never blend in anywhere I'm at. Uh-huh, like, yeah, ev- every, well. everybody knows I'm American. Uh-huh. So that's, that's one of the things. Like, I never get what country are you from. They ask what state I'm from. Every now right, and then, right, but right off the bat. Well, no, not right off the bat. Okay. I mean, we'll we'll talk for a minute or two, and then uh, I'm like, oh, what okay. state are you from? And I like, oh, how do you know I'm from the United States? I'm uh, I'm I, I would name a a country nearby or something. They're like, oh, come on, <laughs> I'm not stupid. Every now and then, somebody will think I'm from like Canada or something. But usually, I mean, especially I didn't know this, uh-huh. but Americans are is a hat thing. A hat thing is American. What do you mean? Um, there's not really any other countries that wear baseball caps. Oh, really? Yeah, I found that out because some girls pointed it out one time. Uh huh. That um, oh yeah, we knew you were American because you were wearing your cap. That's funny. I was like, really? That's funny. Like, I just started wear wearing beanies hats, and stuff like, very recently. Like beanies okay. and stuff are popular, but actual like baseball caps uh-huh. is an American thing. I didn't. It know makes that. sense. It's I associated know that. with the sport. Mm-hmm. That's really funny you say that though, because I, I had no idea. Just started wearing hats probably like a month or two ago. My yeah. my roommates always give me shit for it. They're like, because I grew up, I just decided randomly. I'm like, I'm gonna switch up my appearance. So I, I grew out a beard. Uh, it was longer than it is now, but uh, 
grow out a beard and then start wearing hats and they're like oh it's hat beard guy hat beard guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah what uh mitch and i because mitch travels with me on our bigger tours he does that's the video editor yes okay absolutely yeah yeah he does food challenges too so i'll do the challenge he'll film me and then i'll film him doing it as well oh very cool. unless it's like a really big challenge the good thing about the where where mitch is in luck or fortunate is that i'm usually like we'll have a time on the schedule um, everybody goes there that's when i start mm -hmm. and then he's able to watch me gauge what strategy he wants to use uh, we might talk strategy beforehand on what to do but then if it doesn't work for me or i do something that he doesn't like that he won't work for him he's able to adjust his his strategy and also it's just whether he's able to know whether he's going to win or not okay sometimes so, he doesn't even give it a go yeah because my capacity is a little bit higher than his uh -huh. he beats me on time sometimes but a lot of times that's because he's fully focused on the eating I'm more about the experience. Absolutely. And um, the entertainment element. Yes, yes. So I'll talk. Like in a 20 minute challenge or a 30 minute challenge, I might have three or four minutes just from talking. Mm. And just the time that's all involved with that, having to clear my throat, get ready to talk and all that. He's just fully focused on eating. There mm. are times where he's just faster than me. Um, there's some foods that he's better at than others. Uh -huh. He's he sometimes he beats me in steaks because he's more efficient with cutting and eating. I'm not very good at multitasking of doing two different things at once. Okay. But um, no, he he does a good job. It's fun to tour with him. That's cool. That's cool. You got a partner. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When I went over to the UK for that trip where I had to borrow the money from mom and dad, uh -huh. it was just me most of the time. There's a lot of freedom with that too, but also it's nice to have somebody to go out with. Totally. And just to just be around. It's not as lonely. Doing that alone would get, I could see that. Yeah. Like as fun as it would be even in maybe like big cities surrounded yeah. by new people, like to have like a consistent person there would be, that'd be a huge yes. added element. Yeah. You always have to go into just random groups and try to meet people. Absolutely. Which in some places it's easier than others. Absolutely. So no matter where you're at in the world, everybody's a bit clicky to an extent. Like if you go out with six friends you're going to be around those six people and you're not just going to guys are a little bit different. I, I, it just kind of depends on the dynamics of the people where you're at, but it's some, some places it's harder to, to mingle with a, a group, but it's also too harder to just kind of join a group. I don't really know how to explain it. It just kind of depends or merge a group. Like yes. I know I've stayed at some hostels where like, well, we'll just throw a group together for that night and then go out. But even like you said, where like, have you stayed at hostels? Uh, so I've stayed in San Diego. Uh, okay. I actually did a backpacking trip across the United States. So I've left oh. the country like once when I was like two, went to Jamaica. Besides that, only done this like one trip. But it was a three-week trip with two Australian buddies that I met here. Okay. And actually speaking of the gap year that you're talking about, they uh, – they they both had like told me how that was like a big deal yes. over in Australia. Like they'll they'll take that gap year, and uh, that was a new concept to me. I was like, that's awesome. If the that's eldest cool. brother and sister do it, uh -huh. almost ninety seven percent guaranteed, all of the other siblings behind them are going to do that's it. An exp that's an approximate number. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I've talked to somebody at hostels, and they're uh -huh. like, oh, my sister did it and talked about how cool it was. I knew I had to do it too. Makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. So I, I like how they they brought they introduced me to that concept how travel was so much more I don't know not, not just enticing but like it just opens up your world to how they always say and it's it's very cliche but the the world is one book book um, if you only stay in your state or your country you're just reading a page of it I like that I like yeah. that and they, they, honestly just meeting them was kind of like traveling because it, in the aspect that you gained like. I gained a new perspective on this world and of myself really on uh different just different ways of viewing the world, different ways of viewing my own like home mm -hmm. and just Missouri in general and yeah. uh, that was a really added perspective. But go getting back to like what we did, we did a 3 week trip and I think we stayed at hostels in Denver, we stayed at hostels in Vegas. It wasn't 21 at the time. I, I didn't was like even know there months. were hostels at those two places. Yeah. I thought yeah. they were more on the coast. Because I've stayed in Miami. Okay. I know there's some in Boston. 
And they always differ in price, too. Every now and then, if we're staying like three of us, if like my sister's on a trip with us and Mitch, uh-huh. sometimes it's cheaper to just get a regular hotel room it's a good point. than it is for all three of us to pay the individual prices. Yeah, it's good to – you get more resourceful. That's what I've realized with yeah. like the, the skill of traveling. That yes. they, they taught me a lot more. Like if I would have done that alone, I would have messed up. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can, learn, you can read as much as you want and watch all the videos you want, but uh-huh. it's just like anything – you're going to learn way more once you start actually doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I didn't realize it was such a skill, honestly. It is. Yeah, and it's a skill because, like, when when I'm on my trips, I budget about 1000 or 2000 every trip just on stuff that would have been cheaper if I had planned more ahead okay. or things like that. But over plan kind of. Uh, well, no, just especially with school and stuff, I don't have enough time to plan much of anything. Mm. I never really look, except for big ticket flights, uh-huh. big, big money flights. Most of the stuff I do is mostly just planning a week or two ahead. Mm. Just because when I'm on my tours, I have to plan. We're in a new city like every day. It's crazy. Wow. If I was just a recreational traveler, it'd be a lot more relaxed. I would do it differently. Okay. So so it's kind of structured as in, like, we're going to be at this restaurant yes. on this date. We're going to be at this restaurant on this date. And then it's kind of filling the gaps yes. from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like where am I going to stay? I'll figure yeah. it out that night. Yeah, I kind of, before I leave, know a basis of all the cities I'm going to go to okay. based on the route that I can take. Okay, absolutely. But as far as, like, the hotels and the, the even the trains, the buses and everything, that's usually not figured out until one or two days before every now and then once i get there okay like i there's been i'd say probably 200 times especially in the united states when i have a rental car is where i'll book a hotel that we're staying at at like nine o'clock PM. oh that night wow yes. wow and we'll we'll get there at 10 o'clock wow and then i will check in there's no and and it's one of the reasons is because i got burned for like a thousand bucks back in 2013 on my very first trip over there oh. with Mitch. Mitch is, uh, well, we'll call it our mutual friend, wanted to uh, join us in Amsterdam and in, in France. And I let him book this place in Amsterdam that he really wanted to book. Well, he booked it like two or three months out and it was, it wasn't cheap. It um, was, it wasn't, it wasn't a hostel, that's for sure. And then when we were over there in Spain or no, in France, all of the trains shut down. Mm. so and we had already paid for this hotel so in order to use the hotel we had to rent a car and that was super freaking expensive but it was either that or just lose out on the hotel looking back now i wish we would have just waited a day or two until the trains were going Uh because it was more of a that was only a a vacation part it wasn't for a food challenge but it was like a one thousand dollar loss on my part one thousand dollar lesson Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So nowadays, unless it's like London or something where I know I'm going to be there, we don't really ever book anything unless it's a day or anything more than a day or two in advance. Okay. Honestly, the the thing I don't, I don't know if you've run into anything like this kind of getting, I don't know, necessarily cheated, but I went up to Chicago this, uh, this this was last spring break. So this would have been like, like nine months ago, roughly. Yeah. And I went up there with two friends, took a rental car. We park in this parking lot pay for parking and then we brought the receipt with us in like small print on this sign there was this uh it said if you if you pay for a parking spot then leave it on your dashboard so we got our car towed after paying for the parking oh yeah and the craziest part is we got our picture taken by the tow truck driver before leaving so he literally took our picture didn't tell us that we needed to put the receipt in the car and then towed us as soon as we left so we get back, yeah. we, we like rented bikes, we come back three hours later, our car's gone, we're like, what the hell, like, wh- where did our car go, and then, but like, just little things like that in cities that you get kind of uh, gypped on, is yeah. anything like that ever well, happened? Well, that's, that's where, that's where I throw in the budget, of those little things where I've never been there before, and Plan I, you for don't the unexpected. know what you don't know, yeah, mm. yeah, so that, that kind of covers the. And I usually, usually use it, too. <laughs> like, if I've got a 1000 or $2,000 budget, it usually gets used for some reason. Wow. Not only the hotels I, I pick might be 20 or $30 more than if I had booked it before. And then just slowly adds yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just, you just slowly nick away at it Absolutely. piece by piece. And uh, you can't even really put a number on it. 
just because you don't know. Mm-hmm. If I had bought this plane ticket three weeks prior, how much would I have saved? I don't know because mm. I didn't ever look. So you just kind of budget that in there as far as I'm probably going to screw up a couple times <laughs> just to make sure you don't get over budget. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, but no, traveling is definitely a learning experience. That's and an sure. art. Yes. Yeah, it is. That's cool. That's cool. It seems like you've gotten, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of maturity, a lot of independence and just resourcefulness as a whole. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you gain confidence, too, as you go. Mm. Yeah. Like, you know, like the first time I think I went over there, I, I like exchanged cash or something at the airplane or at the airport, which is like the dumbest thing ever, because that's where you lose all your fees and stuff. But nowadays, Wait, what do you mean by that? Well, like if you if you brought if it, say you bring like two hundred fifty dollars in cash over to London uh-huh. and you go to one of their little uh, kiosks at the airport, uh-huh. you say, "Hey, I've got this two hundred fifty bucks. Oh, I want to like change it to pounds." Something? Oh, they'll take a lot of it. Really? Not not like fifty percent or something. But like even like six percent. That's more than, a ton. More than you're comfortable with. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, but now. I'm able to just with the the Charles Schwab or whatever, I just throw my my debit card in the machine and there's no fees at all. And if there are fees, Charles Schwab covers it. Oh, really? So, yeah, like I could be I'm in a strip club in some God-known city where with $20 uh, ATM fees, Charles Schwab covers it. That's awesome. Yes, because there's no Charles Schwab ATMs anywhere in the world. It's pretty neat. That's awesome. Yeah, I so just wrote Charles Schwab <laughs> down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good tip. So. Good tip. Oh yeah, definitely. Thank you. I appreciate the advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I like, we went on an eighteen country tour uh, over this past summer break. Wow. All over, uh, like three. No, on in, it was called the Eastern Canada, Europe, and Asia tour. Okay. So I went to Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, and Ontario in Canada couple in michigan and then all over europe and asia every month at the end of every month i would get like 70 bucks deposited back into my account which were from all the fees because i went through like nine currency during the trip okay uh, from euros while i'm in europe to all these different I Asia never thought currencies about that. Wow. and things like that yeah and that's that's a skill too as far as getting to a country and only taking out what you're going to use uh-huh because you don't want to get to the last day and still have ninety dollars worth of of money left. Wow. Okay. Cause, yeah. Yeah. Because then you're going to lose some on that conversion. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like as you get better, usually I might have like seven, eight bucks left or whatever, and then I'll just buy candy or something at the at the airport or spend it on a coffee or something right before I leave. Oh yeah. Yeah. But there's no point like, in bringing pounds back. Mm-hmm. Unless maybe for the show, it's like, oh, look, look, I got, oh, yeah, got yeah. a Chinese dollar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might give it to like your nephew or something totally. like that just as like a, a present. But you're also not going to give him a 50 either. You're going to uh-huh. give him a dollar or a nickel or a pound or like a one pound piece or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's also crazy too. United States is like the thinnest money. Oh, no way. Yeah, when you go over to europe or um australian stuff you can tell the thickness yeah 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 their wallets are thicker as as far as like the dollars like this Uh uh-huh the the europe money is like this so they have like thicker wallets interesting so yeah like in europe my the money will pop out of my american wallet oh that's funny yeah yeah, because rappers always brag about how thick their wallets are. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, just go buy one from Europe. <laughs> well, no, not even like thickness because of how many bills are in it. I'm talking about. It's literally made thicker. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah. They, all the rappers should just go buy a European taller. wallet. Let's call it taller, not taller. thicker, taller. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, because okay. the money is taller. Oh, I was yeah, thinking okay, you could yeah, tell I like thought that. that. I thought that you were thinking that. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, same, same, same width as far as, but the tallness of the dollar it's taller okay absolutely So, which is why the money sticks out of my american wall interesting i never thought about that yeah either. yeah it's different it's weird also too their money's washable really it's made of a different type of material they were thinking ahead lay out like if you stick a 100 dollar bill in the washing machine here it's effed no uh-huh. but you can reuse it if you stick it if you stick a, a pound or whatever a, a five pound bill or a, a, they call it notes it, it's just a different material. I like how they call it notes, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Got well, my note. There's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of different words that you got to get used to. Like what? Um, well, the big thing is is fag. A, a fag's a cigarette oh. over in England. <laughs> And if you say, oh, I'm going to go smoke a fag or something here, uh-huh. people will just, wait, what? <laughs> so, what, what? What'd you call yeah, me? Yeah, what'd yeah, you call yeah. me? Or like a lot of their names have extra letters. Okay. Like neighborhood has a U in it. Color has a U in it. Oh, I have seen that. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, like you always know on my YouTube comments or my Facebook comments if they're from the UK or Australia or something because they've got a whole bunch of letters in all their words. Okay. One of my favorite expressions from those two Australian guys I was talking about is, uh, oh, I, I, okay, I'm going to say it, and I, I got to think what it meant. Okay, okay, so it's, we're not here to fuck spiders, mate. I was like, <laughs> what did you, the first time he said that, I was like, what did you just say? I've never heard that. We're like not that's... here to fuck spiders. That's literally like an expression over in Australia. And so, what was what was the meaning? So the meaning was pretty we're not here to mess around oh, okay much. like like um uh, that's what i figured he always said it like with uh um, context clues yeah yeah so, so he'd say like hey do you want another beer or something like yeah, that yeah, yeah, hey man okay. you want another beer we're here we're not here to fuck spiders mate we're here to get us like up. Yeah. i was like do you want a beer or not yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so no that's funny yeah i've never i've never had somebody tell me that and then like bloke bloke yep yep or geezer geezer what's that geezer and basically just a guy. Like, we think of an old person. Here, yeah, but, yeah. Ah, oh, look at this gazer. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's not, like, disrespectful or anything? It's just no, literally, like, you no, call, you call no. your buddy, like, no, hey, what's up, they, gazer? They call girls birds. Birds. Me and my bird. Yeah. Birds and the bees. Look at them birds over there. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Interesting. Nothing okay. you'd ever say here. Like, uh-huh. standing at fins or something. Oh, look at them birds. But then again, we probably have some weird things, too. Like, like yeah. Especially, like, I feel like rap culture's brought, like, Look at them! Uh, look at the sh- look at them shorties. Look at them. Yeah, sh- yeah, look yeah, at yeah. them shotties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at yeah, them yeah. biddies. Like, or or they've got some what I call stupid pronunciations. But um, like garage here is garage. Uh huh. In Scotland, I was so mad because my buddy invited me out to to meet him at a bar that I had never met before. It's five o'clock. Okay. Just so you know. How long has it been? Oh, oh, into the pot. Uh, an hour and a half. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. yeah. Let's wrap it up soon. Yeah, it's cool. But um, I got to get back to studying. Yeah, absolutely, man. But um, yeah, so I was in Scotland trying to to meet this friend, and he was telling me on the phone that we're going to the the garage. The garage. The garage. It's hard not to say without like an accent. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was saying like the carriage or something like that. Uh huh. And so I spend like fifteen twenty minutes looking for this damn place, and I couldn't find it on my Google Maps or anything. And then I finally met him. And it was the garage. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, I'm like, dude, you said you were at the the, the <laughs> garage or some shit. He's like, yeah, yeah. I was like, no, it's the garage. <laughs> the garage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you threw me off too. I was like, I was thinking this is like I a place never downtown. Thought the garage. Yeah, I yeah, never yeah, would have yeah, thought yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then the other thing too is, is you oh, know how great. we have aluminum cans? Uh huh. It's aluminium there. <laughs> Totally stupid, <laughs> which they think aluminum stupid. Uh, but yeah, wait, alu- say that al- again. aluminium. 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 So it's like a Pokemon. Aluminium. <laughs> yeah, it's it's weird. I don't understand it. I've never. But heard they either swear one of by those. it, and then they say whenever you give them crap about their language, they say you took yours from ours. Uh, it's English, mate. It's not American. Those, the, oh, yeah, those yeah, games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah. games. You're okay. speaking English, mate. It's not American. <laughs> So they, guys, they have a point. You they guys copied point. off of our language. Yeah. Well, here's here. This is how I would refute that. And something that's never made sense to me. Why do all international singers, if they sing in English, why do they sing in, in like an American accent? Have you noticed that? No. Like even like the Beatles, the Beatles are from Liverpool, right? But yeah. like they sound like they're American whenever they sing. I've never thought about that. What I one thing that I find weird is the amount of Europeans and in other countries that they wear American slogans and shirts and stuff all uh-huh. in English. It, I mean, just call it English, not even American, but just words in English. Mm-hmm. That you ask them what they what it means, they have no idea. Really? They just like the design of it. Yeah, I, I learned that from uh, my buddy in eating, his sister. We were all out, and uh, I was like, oh, why'd you, why'd you pick that shirt? And uh, she basically said, oh, I don't know what it means. It just looks cool. 
It's purple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah the, it, well, it said, like, live, laugh, love or some crap. Okay. One of those cliche things. Every girl has that yeah, written in her room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and jo, oh, I don't know what it means. But it just, just oh, I, I, I saw it and I thought it was cool. Or else, like, people that act like they only know French, they won't speak. Like, we'll be at a restaurant or something and all these people uh, only speaking French. They'll act like we don't, they don't know what we're trying to say using, like, a little bit of English here and there. But then they're listening to Taylor Swift. So they listen to music in other yeah, languages. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, what I found out from talking to a few people is that a lot of them learn some English uh -huh. by watching American movies um, with subtitles. Wow. So, like, they'll watch Hangover or something like that, but then they'll have their Spanish subtitles on. Wow. So they kind of pick up words of what it means. That's funny because here in the States, like, if. If another if a movie is good and it's in another language, I'm probably not going to watch it. No, I think a I lot of people would stand by that. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't either. It's like so, what the, what's the point at that? What's point? the point? Yeah, because I mean, most of them, are, the, most of the movies we want to watch are in English. Yeah, exactly. I guess just having that option our yeah. entire lives is like, well, there are it's, alternatives. Yeah. So why? Well, it's like most Europeans, most people in all other countries know are bilingual. Right. The number right. of Americans that are bilingual is not very high. True. Yeah, that's a good point. Too. I, I have no desire to learn another language. That's what I always said too. Yeah, yeah. like whenever you said uh, learning a stick shift, like you have no desire. Like yeah, I was, I, I was no thinking desire. that with another language. I was like, plus I, I'm kind of optimistic. This is like rooted in ignorance completely. But like I'm kind of optimistic that like there's going to be some future technology that's going to bridge the the like I guess language gap. Actually, along those lines, I heard that they're working on something where you can talk into it, and what comes out is is English. Almost or, like, I mean, a, whatever like a hearing language. aid kind of well, deal. Well, like um, I have friends that we communicate through Google Translate on our phones. Wow. Like I'll say, like say you know Spanish and you don't know English. Uh -huh. I'll pull up my phone. Thanks to T-Mobile having wa or data. Shout out. I'll, yeah, I'll, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll put it, and I'm sure other networks do too. Um, just provide data in other countries but uh -huh. i'll have google translate on and i'll say into my phone what i want to in english uh -huh. and then it spits out not only verbally but also talk to text or whatever uh, mm. written it'll say and i'll hold up my phone to him and and it'll show up in his language of everything i wanted to say translated oh that's cool yeah that's cool i so, mean that's just like that's the first step of kind of what yes. we're talking about yeah right yeah, now. yeah yeah so just the Get rid of the middleman uh -huh. and just have of me what I'm wanting to say of just come right out. That'd be awesome. Yeah. A, a part of me's uh, kind of like wish, kind of wishes that like everybody spoke the same language. But at the same time, it's like that diversity, the yes, fact that people are like yeah. communicating in different languages that we literally can't understand and they're yeah. of the same human race. That's kind of cool, too. So. Well, and if you go to New York before you really go overseas to learn like the subway and stuff, uh -huh. stand on um, – any of the major streets or in Times Square or something, and you'll realize there's like six languages going on wow. within feet, 50 feet of you. That's what I've heard. I've heard yeah. NYC is like very diverse. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. That's cool. That's Any cool. kind of food you ever want is there. Might pay a little bit more for it. Uh -huh. But, yeah, just the amount the amount of diversity there is crazy. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. And one of the, the things that the uh, and people in other countries will complain about is the major cities are – are there's more Americans and and not tourists but um, non country people there? Like in Dublin, there's more non Irish than there are Irish. Really? Yeah, and it's the same with London. I did not know. That. Yeah, or in Sydney, just the amount of of non natives that are there, mm. uh, either working or just living there now or, or whatnot, is is really high. I guess that's kind of a pride thing. They're like kind of kind of feel like they like an obligation to protect their where they're from or something like yeah, that. Yeah, or else like uh the like even the like even us, I mean, we're pretty small minded in the fact that we don't want like if if somebody just came over here speaking a whole bunch of Spanish uh -huh. that we don't understand or anything, I mean we're not gonna really have much to do with them just yeah, because good point. we can't understand them or whatnot and there's not really any relation to it so it's not like a, a disrespect thing it's more yeah. like it's like okay you like, have nothing in you're, common you're welcome here but like i'm probably not going to associate you and that's nothing against you it's it's just like other or else too um i mean 
in the in the big going out cities and stuff, uh-huh. if you like love your country and blah 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 blah, when all these other people are just coming here getting pissed drunk and doing all this stupid stuff, uh, you yeah. don't really. Lo- some tourists don't respect. That's but a that's good also point. blanket stereotyping, like all Americans is. It's like uh, around when uh, Trump was running for office, uh-huh. when we were in Europe, everybody, like, one, once they found out we're American, oh, we hate Trump, blah, 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 blah. Uh, really? When here we are, we don't give a damn. Uh-huh. I mean, I'm like the least political person ever. I same, don't, same. I don't care who you like or blah, 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 but if you like food and beer, I'd love to hang out with you. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. I don't care what your political or religious views are, but... um. It's just everywhere you go, there's stereotyping that happens and then just blanket things based on hearing one thing or, or whatnot. Uh-huh. So you'll deal with that wherever you go. Absolutely. You, well, you want to wrap this up? Uh, sure. Yeah. Cool. cool. Yeah. yeah, no, we just got carried away with talking. It's been fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, did that surprise you whenever it was like an hour and a half in? Or... No, I figured it was something like that. Okay. Yeah, because I knew we'd been here a long time. Uh huh. I know some people, they get thrown off. They're like, they're like, what? That was an hour and a half. Like they're they're like I thought that was thirty minutes. I'm like, oh I'm yeah, like, no, it's hour yeah, and a yeah. half. No, in. no, I, I knew it was a long time, but also too went quick just because there hasn't been any lulls in conversation or anything like yeah, that. True. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on, man. I oh, really yeah. appreciate it. I really no, appreciate it. No, maybe maybe we can do one more before May, and I'm all gone and stuff. I'm down. I'm down. Yeah, or honestly. maybe uh, after. We'll do something when we do the food challenge together. Okay. We'll do another podcast. I was about to ask you, like yeah, that. if it's if it's not like a burden or anything, I no. would love to try that. I'm totally yeah, about Yeah, you like can do it with me, and, and then maybe we'll do a podcast after where you can talk about it. Oh. Yeah, like, that'd be like, good. Oh, this is maybe. Well, not maybe, right after. Yeah, okay, I mean, totally. Just like a, a week or two after where you can just talk about the experience. Kind of like a review of yeah, yeah, food yeah, yeah. eating. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, talk would, about what you would have done different in your training and. Uh-huh. And things like that. I think that'd be fun. I think I might go the watermelon route. Okay. I, I like that idea a lot. Uh, a lot less calories. Yeah, true, true. Yep. Well, cool, cool. So. And also, I want to compliment you on uh, your humility. It's really cool because you've seen, you've seen so much success and some of that, I, I don't know if you want to call it fame. We'll call it, we'll call it a following. Like you, you have a large following and it's, it's so cool to me how humble you are because I consider you like above average of just – your everyday person like i think you're a lot more humble like you can you can just tell like after talking with you for an hour and a half you're you're in humble you're a really humble dude and you've well, thank you and you it's i feel like it'd be really easy for your following fame whatever you want to call it to notoriety like i feel like it'd be really easy for that to get to somebody's head so it's it's really cool and uh refreshing because it kind of it's kind of counterintuitive in comparison to what you would think of somebody with a larger following well, thank you. Yeah, I was getting some groceries at the Walmart uh, neighborhood market nearby last night, and I was in line, and all of a sudden, the guy tapped me on the shoulder behind me. He's like, are you are you Randy Santel? I said, <laughs> yeah, I am. He's like, dude, I've been following you for years. Oh, I said, nice. well, yeah, I live here. You knew that, right? Because that would be the way to know how much he follows. Uh-huh. Anybody that really follows me should know I live in Springfield, Missouri. Because uh-huh. all of the, the Friday videos... Uh, where I do fast food and stuff. MSU gear. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm wearing Missouri State stuff. Or else I'm in Springfield, and we will do a couple clips of the drive there or something. Uh-huh. And you should recognize that. Hey, we're in Springfield. Totally. But um, yeah, he's like, oh yeah, I knew that. I just didn't know where you lived or anything like that. So, but no, it was good to meet him. But I always tell people too that internet fame is a lot different than real life. Totally. And plus, too, the United States is so spread out that I have more followers in the United States, but also. The UK fits into Texas. What do you mean by that? Uh, well, I mean, oh, it, the size. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. The UK fits into Texas. Wow. Yeah, it's, I've it's, never knew. I've yeah, never heard yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we have more followers in the United States than in the UK, but as far as compact area, uh-huh. I get recognized a lot more when I'm there than I am here in Springfield oh. or anywhere in the United States. Does it ever like? Do you? Does not? It doesn't seem like you dwell on this too much, but does it ever blow your mind that like? your name and face is literally known all around the world? Uh, yeah, I think sometimes, like even on the new seasons of Man vs. Food that's going right now, uh-huh. I'm on a lot of the Wall of Fames. Oh, really? So it's pretty neat. Yeah, and it's pretty cool. Like I'm in probably 25, 26 countries just on Wall of Fames. 
That's pretty neat. That's cool. That's so really then sometimes cool. fans will like tweet me or they'll Snapchat me or something a, uh, a picture. picture. Yeah, they're at the restaurant and they're like, Randy. "Oh, here you are in the Wall of Fame." Yeah, <laughs> like, "Oh, cool. Thanks for sharing." Very cool. Very cool. So, but yeah, no. Thanks to the internet, is it's just so many opportunities these days. It's it's awesome. True. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what I've noticed too. I'm very into like the YouTube culture and whatnot. It seems like these these YouTubers that are self made, like they're they are typically a lot more humble than your typical celebrity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a lot of the, it wasn't given to us, we all earned it, and the reason we still have it are just because of all of our fans that are watching, uh-huh. so to think we're on some kind of throne above them is kind of silly. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, very cool. So This is, but, a, this is a good time. Yeah, no, I appreciate you having me on, uh, maybe I'll see you at the gym or whatnot soon, and we'll do that food challenge together. Absolutely. Do you have like a set time or like a, an idea of time, or is it just pretty much whenever you can? Uh, well, I'm on a diet until probably the end of March. Okay, and totally. Then in April and May, I'm going to really hunker down and probably do a food challenge a weekend. Okay, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I'll definitely so. see you at the gym now. That, now okay. Like, now, now that, uh, especially going after eight because I go after eight a lot. Honestly, okay. I go at like nine a, a ton. So cool. All right. Yeah, that'll be fun. Cool. Absolutely. Okay. Like, there's Jordan. Yep. Yep. So any uh, any last words? Anything else? Uh, in your mind? No. Anybody that wants to watch a, a video or anything, it's all Randy Santel, and as far as I know, there's only one. So um, yeah, just Randy Santel. And if you want any tips for food challenges, or you want to find one near you, it's all uh, foodchallenges.com. And I'll put your website and your YouTube channel in the description. Okay. So I, le- I left myself a little note at the top. There. Thank you. And then yeah, Facebook as well. So those are the YouTube and Facebook are the three main areas we're at, and. If you're on Instagram, we're there too, Snapchat and Twitter. So I appreciate everybody following. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. I put a note right there. Right next to the Charles Schwab. Hey, yeah. <laughs> good, good, good. Cool, cool. All right. That is the end. Hour and 40 minutes in. Wow. Look at All us. Right. We did it. We did it.